Hey everybody, hey. how you doing? Happy Friday, let's have a beer. What's everybody drinking? Mom and Dean, what you got there? I got my wine. All right, what kind of wine you got there, Mom? I got the real sweet light wine. You like the sweet Moscato. wine. You bet. Moscato wine. Moscato. Jan likes the non-sweet wine. Yes. What you got there? Cabernet. Cabernet. Uh -huh. And a blue moon with an orange to support our citrus farmers here in Central Florida. You guys are awesome. Let's have a beer. We continue our social distancing club. We started this back in March, didn't we, Jan? Yes. When things kind of shut down and we kind of wanted to keep connected with everybody in Polk County and Central Florida. We're social distancing, but we're not socially distant. And we've got a great show for you. Mama Jean, the sports fan, how are things in the NBA? What's going on in the NBA? It's kind of exciting. We've had a lot of uh, surprises. Like what? <laughs> Some of the main uh, teams aren't winning real good, and that's kind of fun. You like it when it's not the winning team all the time. That's right. And I, I watched a great game last night between the Portland Blazers and the Brooklyn Nets. It was a tie, and they got to the end, and they missed a shot. The Nets missed a shot, so they lost by one point. One point. But they played great. There wasn't any arguing. There wasn't any mean uh, fouls. It was the best game of, of, that I've seen. Well, in that's the, no fun. In, in the bubble. That's no fun no, in the I bubble. Don't, I don't like it rough. <laughs> I don't like it rough. <laughs> but I want to predict, make a prediction. Okay, you got a prediction. For next year, the Brooklyn Nets will be in the finals. You think so? Oh. Yes, I predict that. The okay. Brooklyn Nets will be in the because finals. they're going to have two good players join them. Uh, that aren't here in the bubble. So Who's that? Who's going to join them? Duncan and, um, and uh, uh, Irving. Duncan oh, yeah. and Irving will be in the bubble next yeah, year. they're good. And they're both good. Mm -hmm. Christy Peterson's joining us. Christy, thanks hey, for uh, checking in. Renee Butler's here. Randy hey, Renee. Stanton's here from Canada. We're just having a great time. And, Mom, what about your boy? How's your boy LeBron James doing, your favorite? Um. Well, he's not playing very good, which I like. <laughs> <laughs> Was he crying about it, James? Oh, no. <laughs> um, I just like the other team to win because he's so ornery. He's ornery. Now, you coach basketball, right? Or did I you did, play no, basketball? I played basketball. You played basketball. Coach. Okay, what position did you play? I played uh, center. And what was your secret to your success as center? Oh, I, I was just tall and clumsy. <laughs> and clumsy? <laughs> but I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> well, Mom and Jean, we're glad you're with us Thank tonight. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor. You got anything to say about NASCAR? I know you've been watching the races a little bit. Uh, yes, I, our, my little Kevin Harvick is doing some great. Mm -hmm. And Denny Hamlin. We like him. We like Hamlin. Hey, and how about the Bolts? Hockey. We're yeah, one and one with Columbus. Yeah. That, that game the other night was something else. Something else. Five overtimes? Five overtimes. Longest in history. Mm -hmm. NHL history. Mm -hmm. Every time I turned it on, it was back in overtime. I know. Flip and watch the news and come back and back in overtime. The longest game they've ever played. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for uh, joining us for Let's Have a Beer. Let's toast to a great weekend ahead. Let us know what you're drinking. Chat with us here. And it is an honor to have you. We just love to spend our Friday nights with you kicking off the weekend. Let's see who's here. Susan Brown. Hi, Susan. Thanks for checking in. Diane Williams is with us from Kentucky. Having a beer with you. Hello, Mama Jean. Diane says hello. And Kathy Toro. Hi. Says, hey, Roger. We appreciate Kathy joining us tonight. So keep chatting with us. I want, I want to correct her. I'll okay. Uh-oh. And for the, with the Nets, that's just Durant, not oh, Duncan. Okay. Durant and Irving. Kevin Durant. I, I I want to be sure I get that right. Okay, get it right. Okay, I'm right. You you got it. You're right on top of it here. Yes, I All am. right. It is so good to have everybody with us. Hey, Michael Yevchek from church. Hey, Mike. Says you're looking good. Hi, Mike, Mike says hi. Yeah, he's <laughs> watching tonight. You know, we've got a very special guest joining us tonight too. On let's have a beer. And look who we finally got on the show. Let's have a beer. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, how are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing this evening, Roger? Doing great. Thanks for coming on the show with Jan and I and Mama Jean. And it's good to see your face because, you know, you come to the radio station 97.5 where you came until March, and we've been communicating on the phone. That's kind of tough. Yes, and now we're having to do our morning segments on the telephone. 
And that's just not mm, as much fun, but I enjoy being with you and being able to talk to the community anyway. And thank you for taking time out because I know early sure. mornings aren't really your thing, are they, Grady? I don't wake up early and I don't wake up quick. Uh, you know, the world ought to start about 10 o'clock in the morning and then kind of taper off about 10 or 11 at night. But you never quit. You work 24-7, 365. Oh, this is not a job. It's a way of life, and I enjoy it every day. It's, it's, a, it's an honor to be the sheriff and to be able to help people, to be able to serve the community and make a positive difference in people's lives. So when you're not working, which is rare, what do you like to do in your spare time, Grady? Well, I think my number one hobby is photography. Now, I hunt a little and I fish a little, and I certainly like spending time with my grandchildren. But if you ask, what's your hobby? My hobby is, is nature photography and wildlife photography. I think when I'm out in the, in the woods, watching nature and photographing and capturing them in their, in their normal daily events, that it's pretty special. And that's where I feel closest to God too, because it's nice being out there with no one bothering you, the phone not ringing, at least hopefully not ringing. <laughs> and taking some pretty cool photographs. What do you think uh, one of your top 10 shots would be? Favorite picture? Oh my goodness, I've got a great picture of the sun rising over Crooked Lake. I've got a great picture of animals as they're feeding or landing or taking off. I've got a pair of bald eagles in the top of a tree that are awesome. I've shot thousands and thousands and thousands of photographs. But you know, one of the things that I capture in addition to landscape and my nature photography is I like to shoot old barns, old churches, old buildings, things that are not going to be here in the future. And if I can capture those so people can say, I remember when we used to do it that way or when that's what a barn looked like. So I've got several of those, and that's kind of an aggravation to Marissa when we're on vacation. You know, I'll see an old barn and stop on the side of the road with all the traffic <laughs> zooming by, and she said, you're going to get me killed one day doing that. And I go, I hope not. I'm well off the road, but this barn's not going to be here in a few more years, and I need a photograph of it today. That's really cool. How else do you drive Marissa crazy? Well, there's lots of things. I, the, the driver crazy. I, I think that I forget that I'm the boss at work and I don't get to be the boss at home. I understand. So that. she reminds me that, look, <laughs> you're not my supervisor, you're my husband. <laughs> but she doesn't think of anything about bossing me around, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I think sometimes I go home and I'm still in that, let's get it done, type A, hard charging, and she'll just say, Sit down, calm down, big boy. You know, there's no emergencies here tonight. All right, big this boy, she's home. got gender control. That's it. How many kids and grandkids do you have, Grady? We've got two boys and 13 grandchildren. 13. Did you hear that? 13. I've got a, everything from just, I think the youngest one's only like two or three months old. You know, I, I look at her, I can't remember how old she is. May, she may be three months old now, or four months. The oldest one's 22 years old. So pick an age, and I've got a grandchild near that age. Name them real quick. Can you give me all their names? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you binge watch anything, Grady, on TV? Well, well, do you know, I don't binge watch television because I do a lot of reading I do a lot of my analytical work when I get home from the office at night. But when I watch television, you can find me watching Gunsmoke, Andy Griffith, one of my, I like Adam 12. I, I like the old shows, I, Gomer Powell. My, I call it mindless TV, things that I don't have to think about things that I can just watch and enjoy. And a lot of times I'm catching up on my emails or reading and, and have the television going in the background. But I'm not a big television junkie. I've always been a type A, got to be out, you know, climbing mountains and climbing trees and 
seen good things happen, positive things happen. So for me just to sit and relax and watch television is difficult. I love college football. I love college football. Do you think they but, should play this season? Oh, oh, absolutely. I think they should play. There's, there, there's a million reasons why I think they should play. But even with college football today, the advertisements have taken the pace of the game away. You know, it used to be when college football or any football played, you know, momentum shifts back and forth. Well, when one team seizes the momentum and is doing well, and all of a sudden you have a television break, well, that gives the other team time to recuperate. Exactly. So I am really, really angry about all of the advertisements during the sporting event because we're trying to watch that to relax. And it's an economic event for those that are in business. So I find myself DVRing my college games, my favorite college games, and coming back so I can zip through the advertisements. But it's taken away the pure football game. And, you know, if I can talk about things that just irritate me, you know, we watch football, basketball, baseball, sporting events to, to be entertained, to see good, wholesome competition by a clear set of rules. I really don't care what baseball players or football players or basketball players think about politics. I don't care. I wish they would just shut up, quit telling me what they think politically, what they think personally, and show me that God-given talent that makes you such an incredibly good professional or college ball player. I don't watch football on the weekends to hear political positions. I'm not interested in that. Yes, sir. When you get tired of playing ba football or the game's over, take your uniform off, put your street clothes on, go out and do whatever you want to. You have a First Amendment right to that. But don't smear it in my face because, you know, I can't enjoy watching a football game if I know that your, your politics is more important to you than football. Your politics is not important to me, but I sure admire your talent to be an extraordinary, incredible ball player. So leave your politics out of it. Get away from it. We can endure the business world because I understand if there's no business people and no advertising, there's no game. I can DVR through that. I can't DVR through those personal opinions about their political positions. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Now we know what Grady Judd's number one pet peeve is. There you go. <laughs> what might surprise us about you, Grady, that not a lot of people uh, are aware of? Well, I'm not sure that anything would surprise you because what you see is what you get. Whenever I'm on the radio or on television, when I'm here today, I'm the same person on camera that I am off of camera. I'm the same person at work that I am at home. You know, what, what you see is what you get. I try to be honest, ethical, and moral. If you ask for my opinion, I'll give it to you. I'm not charging you for it. And if you don't care, like I don't care about theirs, then dismiss it or don't ask me. But I'm, I'm pretty straightforward. I like serving. I like I try to operate with a servant's heart. I want to make things better for the community, and I want to make things better for everyone. So, so really, I don't know that you would see any surprises if you could follow me around at work and at home that you don't see or hear from me in person, on the radio, or in television. You are an open book, a genuine individual. I've been to lunch with you several times and you stop and speak to everyone, take pictures, and you're so gracious with folks. I appreciate that about you, Grady. Yeah, I love the people of Polk County. I, and when we arrest people, it's just business. It's not personal. I still respect those that, that we arrest. You know, you just can't do bad things to people in the community and there not be responsibility and accountability. It's not personal, it's business. I tell folks, just behave. Stay out of trouble. It's simple. Leave people alone. You know, you don't have a right to bully people, 
to steal their property, to, to rob and take advantage of folks. That's exactly correct. And thank you for all that you and your deputies do. It's my honor to be the sheriff of Polk County. I appreciate the people allowing me to be the sheriff, and I promise I'll keep working hard for you. And that's easy to do because the men and women of the sheriff's office are simply the very best. They do the heavy lifting. They're the ones that make the positive difference every day. I just have a wonderful opportunity to coach. And we are so happy you're our sheriff of Polk County. Thank you, sir. Now, this is Let's Have a Beer, and I know you're working all the time, but when Marissa, you know, kidnaps you in your home, you're on vacation, are you a wine guy or a beer guy? Do you, do you know, I'm Southern Baptist, so I don't admit to either one. Okay. But I really like a little red wine, and I will drink a light beer and watch okay. a football game. But as, as a good Southern Baptist, you're not supposed to admit that. I understand but I do. that. Uh, you're talking but, to a good Methodist friend, so I understand that, sir. Yep, I I do like a glass of red wine with a nice dinner, though. You're like my wife, Jan. We can't say goodbye without a crazy criminal, Grady. Well, you know, I have so many crazy criminal stories, but I, I like to think about a recent one. We stopped a Silverado pickup truck about at I-4 and 27, and we stopped that vehicle because the deputy said to himself, self, I think it's suspicious that that pickup truck doesn't have a tag on it. It doesn't even have a paper tag on it. So we stopped and the lady driving had a valid driver's license, which really came as a shock and a surprise to us. And she had a fellow in the front seat and he said his name was Gary. And we said, okay, that's cool, Gary. So, uh, give me your information, and we got her driver's license, and the deputy said, I'll be back in just a minute. Well, you know, there's things you ought not to do. Well, Gary got a little nervous, and he told his girlfriend, let me in the driver's seat. So they swapped places, and he took off. Well, you shouldn't do that when nope. the nice deputy's checking you out. <laughs> well, we found out that his name really wasn't De Gary, but it was Anthony. But we found that out after we chased him down. He stopped the vehicle. He took off and he ran. But then we got this fur rocket called a canine who just <laughs> ran right up and caught him. <laughs> and do you know that rascal took off and left us and driving without a driver's license? And he was resisting arrest. And he gave us a false name because Anthony uh, was in trouble. And then we found out that Anthony had cocaine in his pocket. Uh-oh. There's all kinds of things you ought not to do, Anthony or Gary or whatever name you're using today. So he went to jail, and he's locked up because he made one of those poor choices. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, thanks for being a guest on Let's Have a Beer, man. We appreciate all that you do, sir, and your deputies, your entire team. You guys are awesome. Take care. Have a great day. Polk County, great. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd Hello, Grady. joined us uh, a little bit earlier today because uh, he deserves the night off. And uh, yes, we love Grady. We love uh, all of his deputies and how they keep us safe mm -hmm. here in Polk County and Fur Rocket. <laughs> how funny was that? Fur Rocket. That's I've never heard that. Good night. That is a very, very good name. It's great to have everybody uh, with us tonight on Let's Have a Beer. I'm Roger. This is Jan, Mama Jean. I can only afford her a little bit of every show. She's gone. She's <laughs> watching her NBA game. She yeah. gets the Lancy. She's got to go check out the score and see what's going on. What's everybody drinking? Cheers. Here's to Friday night. We've got more show to come here. Cheers. It gets kind of quiet when we drink. I think we've got a, another special guest standing by. Hey, Crazy Terry. How was your week? Hey, Roger. It was great. Hey, I just realized something. I think me and Grady Judd are family. I think we need to do that DNA test Ooh. because you would find out that we are family. Because you know why? First of all, my family, we love you. But when you do something stupid, we're going to make fun of you. I'm just going to tell you. So I think we got that in common for sure. And Lord, we do love to hear ourselves talk. <laughs> I love that. I'm like, you know, I love his sister, Winona. And I just think she's great too. So I just think I want to be in their family. Do you think they'll adopt you? 
Well, why not? I'm a, I'm a good adoptee, I guess. I mean, I don't know. I think I would, I'm easy to adopt, but hard to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> he might not remember your name, though, Roger. Crazy Terry. You know, I have a law enforcement story that I can actually tell. So I had a meeting at the police department. Now, let's just not go into why I had a meeting, but I had a meeting. And so I was driving my son's car. You know, I have an 18-year-old, my Florida Gator. And anyway, so um, I was driving into the police department, and I noticed in the parking lot they were training all the canine drug dogs. So I stopped in my tracks and was like, Lord God, I don't know what my son does. I'm hoping he's a good kid, but Lord, what's been in this car? Uh oh. So I call him. I'm like, hey, Gator, I just won't know. Is there any chance there's ever been drugs in this car? He's like, no, Mom, I don't do drugs. I don't have drugs in that car. And I'm like, no, let me kind of explain why I'm asking. <laughs> now, that I ain't going to get mad. Lied through my teeth. I would have got mad. I'm like, I ain't going to get mad. I just need to know. Is there any chance whatsoever that there's been drugs in this car of any kind? Because if there has, the drug dogs are all going to be in my car <laughs> sitting with me and gnawing at my head. He's like, Mama, I promise you there's been no drugs in that car. Just take my word for it. <laughs> I still sat there a minute because I'm like, Lord, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Take a word from an 18-year-old. <laughs> so I was like driving in real slow, you know, like, hey, wish I brought some perfume. Drove in real slow and parked. Then I sat there with my windows locked going, oh, Lord, those dogs come over here. I'm going to be like, I don't know what's happening. I got to go. <laughs> but you know what? They just went on their way. They just went on their way. And that was great. And then I realized, you know what? They were the bomb sneaking dogs. <laughs> so, I'm like, woo, that was safe. But then I was like, why aren't they coming to me? Because you know I'm the bomb. <laughs> I'm like, why aren't they over here? <laughs> so anyway, but nobody bothered my car, and that was nice. And that's just my only, uh, that's my only law enforcement story that I can tell. Crazy that you can tell tonight. Okay. Uh, live on Let's Have a Beer. Hey, uh, your son's name is Gator. Does he go to the University of Florida? No, he's from Florida and named him Gator, so I could call him Florida Gator, and he sounds smart. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, you got your Florida Gator? I'm like, sir, I yeah. do. <laughs> yeah, I got a Florida Gator, sir. Go Gators. Yeah. That's what I say when I, him and his cousin are both named Gators. I'm always like, go Gators. And people are like, oh, yeah, go Gators. I'm like, they're so stupid. They don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't care, though. It's fine with me. I find me. I was worried about Grady Dub being on there because I was like, "Oh Lord, has he heard about you know my uncle Ernest, who's always mine in the steel?" And I was like, "I was going to say, hey, it's not a real steel. It's just what we call his wife. <laughs> He's <laughs> always mine in the steel." Why do you call her the steel, Terry? Because she's lazy, Roger, and she doesn't move. She just sits around. We're like, "Hey, how's your steel? How's your steel, Ernest?" <laughs> He's like, "Well, I'm doing some butterscots." Uh, you know, moonshine. We're like, oh, that wasn't what we were talking about. We were talking about the steel on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you we love you, but we'll make fun of you. <laughs> what we do in North Carolina, it's what we do. Crazy Terry. We're uppity and we're from the north. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit further north. It's true. It's true. I'm practically a Yankee Doodle Dandy. <laughs> my parents and my mama are just going to be so upset that I even said that. I was just kidding, mama. You know, I'm Southern. Good Lord. You got a special day to celebrate tomorrow, Crazy Terry. Yes, it is the love of my life's birthday. Aww. So I bet you didn't know it was Amazon's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I just like them because they always deliver. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something about a nice package, but I ain't doing that. No. Um, I was just saying that, you know, yeah, tomorrow is the love of my life. My husband, it's his birthday and he's younger than me. So he likes to say that all day, like, Oh, I'm younger than you. I'm younger than you. And I'm like, well, you know why? Because you need guidance. And I had to marry you to guide you. Because I was like, Lord, he's going to need some older woman to help him throughout his whole I'll life. Come out. He got him a cougar, didn't he? That's right. I am a cougar. That's cougar what, terror. what I am. What? We just call them wild cats in North Carolina. I'm just a wild. Oh, no, I can't say that. I'm just a wild cat. That's just what it is. I can't be a cougar. Nobody wants to be all spotty. I got me a cougar. Go, Jan, go. Oh, Terry. I know. Craig, Craig says, well, you know, men die before women, so this way we'll live about the same time. That's right. <laughs> right. Well, that doesn't work out. That's why I got a younger man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Trying to kill him every day. Lord help him. He's got, you know, he's got the patience of Job. He don't have the bad friends that Job had because he had some rotten friends. They're like, oh, Job, your life is bad. And he's like, really? 
thanks a lot. I didn't know that. <laughs> anyway, no, he's got patience of Job, and he's smart. He can read and stuff. Well, we wish him a happy birthday. Yeah. I'll tell him so. He's over there um, drinking some butterscotch moonshine, so Ooh. let's hope he remembers his birthday. From Aunt That's Still. Legal. It's legal moonshine. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. From Aunt Still. We've got I'll some music tonight, Terry. I'm ready. I need some music. Hey, honey, I got a free concert for you. Come on, happy birthday. <laughs> As we say good evening <laughs> to the Rusty music. Right Man, how are you guys? Here. Hello. Hi. Howdy, howdy. Nick Allen, Rusty Wright, Lori Lacrosse Wright. Nick Allen, we work with him on 97.5. How are you, sir? Wonderful, man. On a Friday night, let's have a beer, y'all. This is like perfect. This is great. What are y'all drinking? White Claw, mango. Yingling, black and tan. Vodka. <laughs> straight. Oh, Nick's doing just a straight vodka. This should be a great show tonight. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, ran into Nick in the studio Monday, and it was like, why haven't you come on Let's Have a Beer? And he said, let's make it happen. And you guys have been quarantining, but you finally got out, and you did a show recently, too? We did. Uh, we're doing yeah. online shows. It's yeah. been a while that we've okay. played okay. online. But you've been doing online not. shows. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah, right. We've been concerts, uh, you know, through Facebook and YouTube. But, Since March. Yeah. Awesome. That's about been the only venue. We did do the Villages. Uh, they had a special event up there uh, where we did an outdoor concert. But other than that, yeah, we've been stuck at home like everybody else. I bet that Villages show was one of the wildest you've ever done. Oh no. Oh no, no. no <laughs> you have no, no idea no. where I've been. <laughs> Things flying oh. on the stage, sticking on your microphones. Oh, not there. <laughs> oh, so you heard about the people in the villages then, right? <laughs> yeah. A lot of them that, have new hits. <laughs> <was that>? Use <laughs> them. Yeah. Yeah. There are rumors, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. <laughs> no, we we play quite a few biker events, so <clears throat> enough said there. <laughs> we love we love those guys and gals. They're a lot of fun. And we, we really appreciate you uh, you three coming out tonight and playing on Let's Have a Beer. It's the Rusty Wright Band Live right here. Let's let's let it rip. A little thing called I Ain't From Mississippi. Two, three, four. Well done. Thank you. Well, I ain't from Mississippi, but I come here to play. I get a little satisfaction in whatever come my way. Well, I love making music, got the mojo in my soul. Sing out loud and rip on them, let the feeling go. Well, I don't <laughs> no drummer. <laughs> oh, What's my next line? 
<laughs> Can't fire me. <laughs> Don't allow it. Live, we might add, on Let's Have a Beer. That is awesome. So how important is a drummer in a band? Did we just find that out, guys? <laughs> in a blues band? Yeah. What are you yeah. Doing? Pretty much, <laughs> yep. <laughs> but how much great. fun is it? That That's was great. great. We loved it. You sound awesome. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And thank God we can improv. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It happens live, you know, when you're in the blues club or something. It's like, oh, man, just another time around. To keep it on going. Bring it on, bring it on, bring it on over here from the bar. <laughs> That's a lesson you learn young. If, if you're out playing and if you screw up a song and you laugh about it and just go, yeah, and people forget about it within 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. If you get mad and you, you pout and you, you make the... You know, funny faces. Everybody knows, and that's what they're going to remember the, mm -hmm. for the rest of the night. They're going to come like, "Man, you remember when they did that?" And, and so I just yell, "Solo!" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Nick. Uh, Ann Bass Madden has a question. Uh, she says, "Where is this?" And we're doing this Facebook Live, our social distancing club. Let's have a beer. But mm -hmm. where are you guys performing from tonight? We are performing from my house, in my office, in my studio, in Winter Haven, Florida. Oh, so it's live from Winter Haven tonight. Winter Haven, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I even set the whole studio up just for this purpose. That's I tell you great. what, it sounds great, it looks great, and we appreciate your efforts there, Nick and thanks Rusty and Lori. Well, thanks for uh, joining us, and we can't wait to hear more from the Rusty Wright Band. Do something safe. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Let's do uh, haters. All right. Cool. Little uh, song I wrote actually that's about the, the fact that I just got tired of seeing all the people talking such nastiness on the internet and online everywhere, and I thought to myself, man, if you wouldn't say that to me, look at me in the eye. Don't type it on that little box. You know? Amen. <laughs> so I decided to put this little thing together. It's called Haters Step Aside. One, two, three, four. Knock, 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 they're pounding 
on my car door Telling me that I can't be that way anymore It's time to pick a party, gotta choose yourself a side Well, I believe in everyone, so hey to step aside song the rusty right band with a great message rusty thanks for writing that and sharing with us tonight on let's have a beer that was awesome thank you my pleasure cool. Yay. nick is it more fun to be on the radio or playing a band it, it looks like you're having a great time tonight oh i love these guys have you got a quick second for me to tell you a quick little story yeah, yeah. Story. yeah it's really not a quick little story but i'll, I'll, I'll we know nick allen real well here reader's digest version <laughs> About over a decade ago, Rusty and Lori were living in Flint, Michigan, and Miss Nan, my wife, and I were doing a morning radio show in Montgomery, Alabama, and their second CD came across my desk. They had a great song on it. We should even try to pull it up tonight if you want to try. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you want to try it? Okay. All they right. Can't uh, fire us. Yeah, true. Anyway, uh, I said, I got to get Rusty on the air play the song, do the interview, and I told him in passing at the end of all this stuff that I play a little bass. Yeah. Had to so, put that uh, in there, didn't you? Yeah, I had to put it in. I play a little bass. <laughs> so fast forward to now, they move from Flint to Florida. I My, thought we'd never, ever run into each other because I'm all the way on the other side of the country, and he's all the way down in Alabama. Oh, yeah. And Miss Nan and I moved back to Florida. We find out via Facebook that we live six miles apart from each other. Yeah. Wow. wow. And they were looking for a bass player. Yeah. So I get this... Yeah, so I get this call. Hey, Nick. I go, yeah? This is Rusty. I go, Rusty who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. What can I do for you? We find out that we live so close to each other, and I'm looking for a bass player. Would you be interested in auditioning for my band, to be in my band? And I didn't even think twice about it. I said, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, well, you had wanted to come to Michigan to audition. I wanted back. to go to Michigan to audition for these guys when they were looking for a bass player years ago. And Miss Nan goes, are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how things work out? Yeah. Oh, best best thing ever. Oh yeah. I mean, I do anything thing for these guys. But to answer your question, Cheers. Roger, you know me. I've been doing radio for over forty years, forty three years now, and playing with these guys is a dream come true. I love them both. I'll do them both for as long as oh, I can. We're family now. Oh yes. Yeah. And you sound great. You really do sound great together. Thank you. Thank you. You want to try to pull it off, or should we do no man? I think you need to. Do you need to pull this one off live? Let's see what you can do here. Show us what you got. This is a story song that's you know about a a made up character I call Whitey Malone. You know, a Chicago blues guy who uh, the, the boss's uh, girlfriend takes a shine to him as does happen sometimes with guitar players. A guitar player getting in trouble. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, he ha he has a, a interesting story where he ends up. Uh, Ending up uh, south of the border after an incident in Chicago. This is called The Last Days of Whitey Malone. <laughs> one, a two, a one, two. Welcome to the Head Cutters Ball. We only use the best and we've seen. 
seen them all. People here like to get down. If you got what it takes, what gets around. Why he got his name from the fact that he never saw the light of day. Pale white from nightlife. Whitey was a hot shot player, jamming and cute, joined Jimmy Stein. Where the girls drink tangeray, dance till dawn. Bebo Z was with Johnny B, but she liked more Whitey's style. And Johnny stopped thinking that man had done him wrong. much do. Wait till the lights go down, then get the job done and get out of town. That's how the deal got done, boy. Well, I'd had a day with the end of a gun. Two thugs, one slug. Saturday and all the players came to the all-night drinking jam. Never see you play games with Johnny's mind. Started to play, but then a ricochet went singing on White's guitar. When the lights came up, Beverly was on the floor.
Lori Nick no is the Rusty Wright Band. <laughs> and it had no business on my radio no, station because we all. played R and B. But sometimes Nick, you hear a great song and you've got to work it in somehow. Oh yeah, absolutely. You got time for another one? I do. No man. Uh, yeah. Up to it. Oh. Here we shut up real quick. <laughs> Let me check my tuning. Oh, it sounds better when it's in tune. I don't do a shorter one. I don't think yeah. after a few more we'd know the difference, Lori. Which one? Th this is true. <laughs> we could do the uh, short version of it. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Rusty Ride Band, ladies and gentlemen. Go no, yeah. Okay. okay, cool. Almost ready. Little thing I like to do a song about uh, going to New Orleans, one of my favorite places, called Going to Nola. Mm.
The Rusty Ride Band. Let's have a beer. How much fun is that? Rusty, Lori, Nick, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for having us, Roger. We certainly do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Hey, where can we find more? I'm getting all kinds of messages. Where can we find more on these guys? RustyRightBand.com, all together. Rusty, right, and right is spelled W-R-I-G-H-T, like the Wright brothers. So RustyRightBand.com. And, of course, we are on Facebook, and we're on uh, YouTube and iTunes and everywhere. We've got six albums out and another one in the oh. works, and you can full, find all kinds of stuff. Full streaming concert is on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our YouTube channel has live concerts and uh, and live stream PBS concerts. Show. Just type in Rusty yeah. Wright Band, and all kinds of stuff will pop up. Nice. It won't be the evangelist, and it won't be <laughs> the rodeo cowboy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and a... And a, and a uh, uh, 18 year old bronc rider yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> funny yeah, just look for the knows. guy with the guitar <laughs> <laughs> the musicians right and of course this COVID 19 will pass together we will get through this and and you guys and gals will be back on the road we love you we've seen you at pig fest and so many other great events and and you've just done a great job tonight thank you so much thank you thank you anytime anytime it's our pleasure thank you and and once again nick's with us at 97.5 you hear him on there a lot and nick i've got some good news guess what i found yesterday what's that my friend some kentucky <laughs> bourbon barrel pumpkin ale oh and i bet you got it from my old place of employment abc didn't you yes i did Good. <laughs> I filled the Jeep up because you know what? It's August and this isn't going to last. Because how many times when you were with that organization did I say, Nick, you got some? We ran out. Yeah. You you asked me ever since I've been working for 97.5. <laughs> and that's been the past five years before I jumped ship to work with these guys. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, I think you made a great move. Let's see if we can get Crazy Terry in on the action here. Bring everybody up here and uh, see if we can just have a big finale tonight whoop let's get everybody on hey wave wave <laughs> hey hey Hi. I'm, I'm married to a former um professional drummer and i was really attracted to his paradiddle and yeah. so he's just really yeah you have to be a drummer to understand that i just want to know i am you. a drummer <laughs> you understand that he had I, a nice paradiddle oh he yeah he did he still does just saying i won't get personal but he has a nice Paradiddle. Paradiddle. <laughs> I love your music. I love it. And I'm I'm a little concerned though. I think you stole one of the titles of the song from me because in North Carolina when people would say, Are you married to your cousin? And I'd be like, No, I'm not from Mississippi. <laughs> I think you stole that title. It was my title first. I was gonna write a song. That was beautiful. That was actually a tongue in cheek thing because I was I being from originally from Flint, Michigan, and being a blues man and running around, I used to get so much heat from all the other blues guys say, You from where? They ain't got no blues in Flint. I'd say, Have you ever been there, man? <laughs> I'm on the south side. I'm down in the South Flint. I told you, ma'am, there are old black men from Mississippi that come up to Flint to get their blues back. <laughs> <laughs> they work at the auto factory and then get laid off. That's the truth. Go back, get laid off. Go back, get laid off. Don't love drink. the music. Love, love, love. Very good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> Rusty Ride Band, thank you. Crazy Terry, thank you. God bless each and every one of you. Have a great weekend. Let's have a beer. Be safe. Be Woo! kind. Love on somebody virtually, and we will catch you next Friday night right here, same time, same place, for Let's Have a Beer. Have a good weekend. Yay. See you guys. Yay. Bye.